Hey guys, Ben Ostervelt here with the Business From Within podcast. Hey, this is uh, Ben here. We have Steve Sims and Chris Miller. It is the Business From Within uh, show. Uh, Chris Miller applied. Uh, Steve Sims and I came up with this crazy idea to coach someone live. Uh, and uh, uh, Chris had uh, had the guts to actually apply. So he's the only guy that actually applied. So we thought, well, we'll take him. But uh, no, that's a joke. But <laughs> Steve's like, what the heck? Anyways, uh, uh, Steve, um, uh, Chris, Chris, you uh, could you just quickly introduce yourself? And I'm going to actually, let's scratch that. Uh, we're going to go that second. Steve, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us what you've been up to, what you're doing. I'll introduce, and then we'll go, Chris, and we'll get stuck right into some of this coaching here. Wow. Well, anyone that doesn't know me, I'm classed as the real-life Wizard of Oz by Entrepreneur and Forbes magazine. Um, I'm the guy that millionaires and billionaires hire to get them married in the Vatican by the Pope, go and see the wreck of the Titanic, or uh, get a drum lesson from Guns N' Roses. So I'm that guy. Um, with the book that came out and with everything I've been up to, I'm really spending a lot of time at the moment on stages. Um, it seems to be quite weird, but I'm doing everything from Dan Fleischman's Elevator Boot Camp, Thrive uh, in Vegas. So you can see me on a stage somewhere between now, each month between now and I think it's March I'm booked up to. So um, I'm, I'm whoring myself out for the world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Steve Sims is a business coach as well, not just a not at a make shit happen kind of guy, but he he actually has a, a very crazy, cool, practical, no bullshit, easy to understand way with people that is a gift. His book is Blue. Uh, what's your book title again? It's Blue Fishing: The Art of Making Things Happen. Good. I just want to make sure that's out there because it's a very powerful book. Chris, you might want to grab that book. Yeah. Okay, Chris. Uh, well, I'm Ben. Uh, anyone that listens to the show knows who I am. I actually coach real estate agents all over the North America. I coach business owners and I work with relationships mostly from the why we do things. It's the, the, the man behind the strategies. That's more my thing than anything. It's the why aren't you doing what you're supposed to be doing. And we usually break that down into some pretty deep level stuff. I just happen to be a crazy good marketing uh, and sales guy as well. So that's who I am. And, uh, Chris, why don't you introduce yourself, and then we'll start from there. Absolutely. Thanks, Ben, and a pleasure to meet you, Steve, as well, and uh, to be together here on the, uh, the chat. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see what we can uh, dis decipher from my business, I guess. But uh, my name is Chris Miller. Uh, I am REMAX agent, uh, real estate in town here in Edmonton. And I've been in the business just about 15 years now, counting this year. Um, so lots of different experience. I uh, grew up in a boutique brokerage in terms of my business um, development, and uh, it was uh, almost five years ago now I switched over to the big branch and uh, Remax. Um, I have obviously various reasons for that, but um, that's certainly my path so far. Uh, I've done the solo thing a couple of times, being that I've been on a team, had a team, been on another team or a partnership, and then again back to being by myself again. Uh, however, currently, uh, I have two gentlemen that I work with on my team, and we are in the process of building a new brand um, with these uh, two guys. So there's three guys together now, and um, I've always prided myself on the relationship side of the real estate business and just being in tune with people as opposed to just shooting for the mighty dollar. So my family is important to me, and I know I have to kind of balance both. Awesome, Chris. And uh, that's a that's a very good introduction. Um, now, you have uh, a bit of time here with us. We mm -hmm. could sit there for half an hour and try to pull stuff out of you, figure it out. Or you can come and say, hey, here's what's no, like if I would just encourage you to get to what you think is the most raw and real thing that's holding you back, where you stuck. How can we support you? Do you have a question? And we got two completely uh, unique perspectives coming at you for this one. Right, right. So you asked me uh, in terms of preparation to kind of pick the two things that I, I think I struggle with the most as a business owner and as a realtor. And I think the two things that really stand out the most is I really pride myself on being a team player. And I've always wanted to be on a team in terms of the work that I do. But I started in this business on a team. And I feel like I, I grew so much in the idea and understanding of a team. 
and wanted to be part of that. I wanted to have ownership in the team, not just be a team member. Um, kind of like going, you know, team player becomes assistant captain, becomes captain, but not necessarily about the ownership, more about being part of something we're building together, being standby side with, side by side with the, uh, the teammates, not ahead of them as their boss. And so when that wasn't something that I felt was happening with the team I started with, that's when I kind of said, maybe I should move on to a different uh, format and try and build a team or become part of a team that exists already um, that can offer that joint ownership feel and work collaboratively with people side by side, but all have um, both a relationship support with your clients as well as a financial support where you get to do fun things together with your colleagues and take care of each other's clients when need help. So, so you're, you're laying out the vision. So we got that. I'm going to keep yeah. moving and say, so then and the please don't, just, just one thing, Chris, if we, if sure. we just kind of rock and roll and I take it, do you give permission that we can just shoot straight and, uh, yeah, and, please and do. go for, okay, good. Cause I, I don't yeah. want you to be offended if I'm like, Hey, let's, let's keep, cause I, no, no. I sometimes we get into explaining stuff when there's some yeah. really good stuff we can be doing other than gotcha. that. And I really understand what you're saying and I really appreciate yeah. that. I really do. It gives me an understanding. And actually, actually it's a team. It's actually the team that I've built is what you're okay. describing. So I understand good. that. Like, so, so, so the struggle so, with that yeah, is this. Struggle, how yeah. do you, how do you find that or create that when it does seem to be rare and you don't feel like you're just flip flopping back and forth to different scenarios. And then number two, doing it on my own. And being that person to create that, because I can't seem to find that, how do I weigh the cost? Because it seems like every time I get busier and I'm rolling with more business, I also get more overhead and more cost. And then all of a sudden, the, the profits deplete into overhead expense. So now I find myself, my biggest part and challenge with the cost of this business is where do I try to grow my business where I'm basically netting the same with all the extra work and time I'm spending and I'm not actually gaining anything from it in terms of long-term profits and retirement plan. So just to go over your, your first question was you've got this vision of a team. Yeah. And how do you get that? Exactly. Okay. Second one is your challenge is every time you grow and get busy, it raises costs, which lowers mm -hmm. your profits. Well, it doesn't just lower my profits. Um, it scales it to the point where I literally am making nothing extra for working harder. Okay. So it doesn't just lower profit. It, it depletes to zero. I'm not making, I'm not getting ahead yep. by sense. growing a team. Yeah. Like what's the point? What's the point? And I, I love this business and I love the idea of a team. So I want to do that. So that's my internal struggle. I want to do it, but cool. where's the line? What do you think, Steve? Are there repetitive um, costs that you find keep popping up that keep being your profit killer? Sorry, the, the, what was the first part of that? Are there repetitive costs? Repetitive costs. Coming up that keep eating into your profits? Yeah, I think when it really comes down to it, Steve, it seems to be the support. Either the assistant, uh, licensed assistant, unlicensed assistant, and or um, systems set up that are cost prohibitive. And again, we're, we're on a straight shooter here. Do you yeah. have systems set up in place? Right now, I am starting at square one. Yes, I did. I had a full package of systems that were in place run by my full-time assistant. And the struggle with that is as soon as I got to the point where I felt like my systems were in place and the assistant was working great and we were starting to build our team, um, there, was, there was no... I'm on board with your business. It's like now my assistant went a different direction and said, I don't want to be part of this anymore. So then all that overhead and cost and setting it up just disappeared. All right. Okay. So the first kick in the testes for you is you're relying on other people. Okay. Yep. You need to rely on the system and the structure rather than the people playing in it. You okay. find the people to play in the structure, mm -hmm. but you need that structure first. And what you've got to do straight off the bat, if I may jump in, Ben, and just can I give him a, a quick bit, Go for it. is <clears throat> one of the things that I do with my consulting clients uh, is I do the three circles. So grab, grab a pen and paper and do three yeah. circles where they actually interlock into each other. And, gotcha. yeah, okay, you're doing it? Yep. Right, so you've got three circles, as I say, they interlock in each other. Mm -hmm. The bottom one, you want to write in there just the words, what I'm shit at. Okay. Okay. 
You'll notice that it interlocks because everything usually does. It runs over. There's no, there's no clear lines and everything. Then the middle line is what you're competent at doing. Okay. Okay. And then the top circle is what your secret source is. Okay. What your 5% at. Bottom line of it is what only you can do, what you excel at, what you're brilliant at. And then what you do is you build up an infrastructure to take on those bottom two. Okay. All right. In doing so, then you actually look for those people to come in. And rather than we're in a modern world now, I've got, I've got personal assistants, never met them in my life, but I know for a fact that all over the planet, you've got, uh, you've got up desk, you've got O desk, you've got my favorite one is Fiverr. Um, you can actually go on to these companies uh, um, uh, Task Rabbit, Magic Hands. These are online virtual assistants. Right. If you've got a uh, structure, you can actually get those virtual assistants, those teams, those companies to look after you so that when one of them leaves, another one rep, uh, jumps in and does the work because you've got the structure. And do you know the first thing you more than likely need to do is work out what you need help in doing. Because it's no good um, picking up one of these VA firms and going, oh, I need help, and then spending two months on them only to find out that you don't know what you need to help in. Right. Okay, so you need to, you need to focus on that structure with, with a, a clear direction of two things. You're either in sales or you're in sales support. Where right. do I need the help? If you're brilliant at sales, you need the support. And support is not a, is not a cost. It's okay. an investment. Because they're there to take away all the shit that you're competent at doing, mm -hmm. and more importantly, the shit that you are shit at doing, so that you can focus on doing more of what you're brilliant at doing. So true. Yeah. I, I see that very black and white. Easy to understand. Crazy I yeah. don't do that already. So, yeah, so, I, think, I think you need to be doing that. Ben, over to you. So, Chris, just a couple of different angles here. Um, like Steve's nailed it. It's, of course. You know what I mean? Like, like it's now, now how do we get that? And I just kind of go back to, so we got, the, I just want to in, investigate a little bit here. Your assistant quit. Yeah. Give me the real reason. I wasn't busy enough for her brain power. She got bored. Okay. Okay, so so that's that's the way you see it. I'm going to give you a couple of different perspectives. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd say about 20% of real estate agents have uh, an assistant. I think 100% need an assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the problem is you said something called full time assistant. Now you mm -hmm. put yourself in a major limiting box there. Yeah. Okay. Full time assistant is overwhelming, hard to manage. Every day you're just freaking loading her up with like this. You're just trying to find work for her. No one wants to work in that. So what mm -hmm. you want to do is you want to find a task that needs to get done. Okay. Versus the change of wording from full-time assistant or anything. And just like, for example, I know the business. So feedback reports, well, find yeah. a feedback manager for $20 a day. Okay? okay. I'm going to show you how to secure your business because if you have five or six assistants, guess yeah. what? One goes, you're not out. One quits. You say bugger off. All of a sudden you got confidence. Right. Okay. okay. So there's your shift. Relying on one person. Now shoot gotcha. back at me. What did I just say? I want to see if you got it. It's essentially build the tasks that need to be handled as individual support so that I can pay someone to do it for me. Yeah. And that's reliable, but I'm not putting a full-time salary and wage on one person's shoulders. 100%. It's going to shift your psyche. It's going to shift your confidence, your overwhelming feeling. When you can't sleep at night, you're thinking, frick, I got nothing going on. Guess what? The next thing is this, is okay. when, when you, um, like if you just, from, a, from, from finding talent, I think outsourcing is definitely, definitely the cheapest, most efficient way. But sometimes psychologically, if you don't have real systems built yet, it's sometimes mm -hmm. cool to have someone with you. So just the right. two different perspectives. I think Steve's okay. 100% right. That's the most efficient way to do it, hands down. I got guys all over the world working for me. But there is, a, there is a place for someone to go meet with you, especially if you haven't developed yourself yet enough as a right. business owner to outsource okay. and trust. So if you think about hiring someone, what if you hired, just think about the people that have babies, okay? Mm -hmm. Babies, because 
if you think high, high talent CEOs, you got, you got like very high talent people that are willing to work for very, very cheap if they don't have to pay for childcare and they can spend time with their kids. So if you drop off a kid at 930 yep. and you pick up a kid at three, you advertise 10 to two. Right. Gotcha. Right. 10 to two. Now you've hacked the whole local area where you're going to give a, and then you do it cheap. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes okay, sense. So just, just a technique uh, from that point. But I do think, I think we're all onto this here because okay. I think you've got some mindset issues around, around the, like Steve said, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. Like it's a thousand percent. Right. And I'll, before, I, before we kind of move back to Steve here, I just going to tell you a story. When I started as a real estate agent, I was already a business coach and I knew I'd have right. an advantage because I built a business versus building a job where I do everything. If you started right. a restaurant, you wouldn't look for the, you wouldn't be doing dishes in the hosting and the cooking. You would just hire those people. Like it's just right. a very different mentality as real estate agents. And Absolutely. so, yeah. and so, and so, um, oh, just dropped, lost my train of thought. How about that? Eh? Okay. Whatever. We're going to, I'll come back to it. Okay. Okay. So, so I, <laughs> Hey man, I don't, I just throw it out, man. If it's, if it's not there, I lose though. It goes <laughs> out my left ear, I think. But, um, but, but uh, yeah, anyways, it's just a worker mentality versus a, a, an employee or a, a, a mentality around that. But if you, sh if you make it really small tasks, make it, about, make it about hiring the right people, very low hours and low price, it really does work. Okay. okay. It, also, it also, continuing from that, it reduces your liability. And there's nothing good about liability. No one likes right. liability you end up resenting, and I know hearing your tone of voice and from what Ben was saying and getting the discovery on that she was bored, the bottom line of it is I guarantee you the worst day of your week or month or bi-weekly was the day you had to pay her. Um, because you're sitting there probably thinking to yourself, shit, I've got to pay this girl. She gets a regular income. I've got to go out and hustle for it, but she's sitting there pretty. She gets the exact same amount of money, or he gets the exact same amount of money every You become resentful. And the second mm -hmm. you become resentful in any relationship, it's done, it's cancer, okay? Right. Totally. If you are now paying people to do something that you can't do and don't want to do, mm -hmm. um, then all of a sudden they become an investment because it's now giving you more time. The one thing we all want is more time. And yeah. I remember uh, one of my mentors, a gentleman by the name of Joe Polish, um, he was talking to me about my day. And he said to me, he said, you know, you do all this marketing, you do all of this. And again, I do a lot of marketing and branding within in my consulting side. And I suppose communication is my, my powerhouse. And he said to me, he said, so, you know, walk me through. And I said, well, I designed the piece. I get a blah, blah. Then I run down the post office. And he said, how much do you get paid, you know, on one of your contracts? And I said, it's usually around about 10 grand. He said, how much of your day is spent in the car, driving down, posting the letters, he said, why don't you get somebody else to do that? Mm -hmm. Now, if you enjoy doing that, mm -hmm. hey, keep doing it. You know, I like feeding the dogs. I like picking the kids up from school. But it's, it takes up my hours of the day when I could be earning 10 grand in that hour. Um, right. <clears throat> but he actually does break it down to find out what someone can do as good as you and then pay them to do it so you can do more of what only you can do. And I think by getting, as, as Ben quite accurately said it, if you take those circles and even take those circles into the people you employ, so you're mm -hmm. only employing people to do a task. You pick this up, you put it there twice a day, and I pay you 20 bucks. Okay? Right. And then you get someone mm -hmm. else to go, right, you put up my newsletter. You pay someone else, you do my vlog. You pay people to do what they can do so you can do what you excel at. Okay. And it's so easy to manage that. Uh -huh. it's so easy. You're like, did you post it? Like, it's like you, you break yeah. down and then the systems that you don't have developed yet, mm -hmm. you're not going to get exposed because they're not doing those things anyways. And if you have to work your ass off to cover until you get enough people or you learn how to yeah. actually have people work for you, there's a whole learning in that, like legitimate learning on how to have people work for you. Like you're going to burn some out. You're going to get rid of them. But the one little tip too is when you hire someone, Tell them that you're going to re-interview them in two weeks mm -hmm. and they're going to interview you in two weeks. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and at that point, you're going to find out if you got a mesh. And then if not, you fire them. Do not hesitate. This is the most okay. important thing. You get too deep with one, they own you. And right. it sucks flipping over. 
So I always tell them, just so you know, uh, on paper, it looks good. I like how you feel. It looks like, but I need to see what you do. So in two weeks, you're going to interview me. I'm going to interview you. We're going to have open conversation and, and we're going to see if we go forward. And sometimes I'll fire them within three or four days. Wow. Like I feel like you can be the best of the best, but you don't know people. You can, I, I got good odds at hiring. I didn't, I've done really well, but I've also done real shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, One of the things I've always done whenever I've, uh, whenever I've interviewed someone at the end of the interview, I've said, look, this has been pleasant. But let's be blunt, I have not met you yet. You have not turned up for an interview. What you want me to see turned up today. Exactly. So we're going to relook at this in a month's time when I actually get to see how much shit you come up with, how good your ethics are, how hard you're willing to work. But just so that we're clear, I didn't meet you today. I met the pretty picture of what you wanted to show mm-hmm. me. So that we're clear. And if you can be that brutal with someone, two mm-hmm. things happen. And it's happened to me many times. One... They never come back, okay? Because they're like, holy <laughs> shit, this is too this guy, this guy saw me for real. That's what happens. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. they turn up. And do you know the funny thing is they turn up the following day and they say, hey, I'd like to – I've had this so many times. They turn up and they go, hey, I'd like to introduce myself. We haven't met yet. My name is Rachel, and I'm going to be the best thing that happened to you. And they, they come in knowing that you've actually pulled the mm-hmm. bug out and you've been crystal clear. Because every interview – is a horseshit performance of trying to give you the best bits of the mm-hmm. best bits of the best bits. No, you want to really see them. So oh, the right. idea of what Ben said, I would suggest, as I say, magnifying it, calling them out on the interview, and then, as Ben said, tell them all, and by the way, I'm going to interview you in a month's time when I actually know who you are, or in two weeks. Okay. And don't be, don't be frightened to get rid of them within 24 hours or 36 hours. You know, mm-hmm. be on them. Watch what they're doing and just go, do you know this isn't working and I don't know how to make it better? Um, so I thank you for trying, um, but I'm going to go a different direction and cut it quick. Right. So, so okay. Chris, Chris, how, do, how does it make you feel to think to fire someone real quick like that? Like feel, not think. Uh, it makes me feel terrible. Yeah. That's why I wanted to ask you that. Because yeah. it's the un, like, these are the right answers. Yeah. They actually get something that sticks with you. It's like the, it's, it, this is the more important question. It's like that feeling of feeling terrible. I think that needs to be looked at just as much as the systems in the business, because that's what's going to sabotage everything. That's right. going to wreck your team. That's or potentially not wreck. Sorry. That's going to give, that's going to cause team. So let me ask you a weird question. Okay. Sure. How could I control you? You can't really. So yeah, I'm think- smart about that answer. Yeah. Go, <laughs> carry on, Ben. I see where this is going. <laughs> So let me ask you something. I look at you and I think instantly when you got on this call, I instantly felt good energy. Like I think okay. you meet the guy that your first impression is fantastic. I think this guy can sell, communicate, and it is instantly likable. And I think that's where your success has come. Is that right? Absolutely. 150%. Okay. That's okay. my so success. Within seconds, I know that. And so here's the thing. If you, you, you don't want to let anyone down, right? Is that part of your success? Oh, huge. That's my, that's my history of my life. Don't okay. like letting people down. So – how would you feel if I just said, well, you let me down? Like, I, like how would that, like if, if I was, let's say I was, let's say I was your team member and, and I felt a little frustrated with you and I'm like, man, fuck, you let me down. And it's like, so what, what happens to you? Um, I could say I'm getting much better at that, but this, the gut answer is I feel True. bad because I've let them down. And what, mo- what, what motivation, what do you do? Like, what does that motivate you to do in that moment? Try to fix it. Okay, there's your control. I can control you all day, Chris. I just got to tell you that you let me down. Mm, okay. There's a, there's a thing that we say, what's the easiest way to make an entrepreneur go bankrupt? Look him in the eyes and say, I bet you couldn't do that for $10. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And there's the control. So yeah, Absolutely. Gotcha. we need to dissect where we're, where, and where we're letting people control us. We're not saying people are controlling us on purpose. If they are, they're, they're schmucks. And you yeah. got to get rid of those people. But the, yeah. even in a relationship, I could probably, we won't go into this part now, but in the relationship with your wife, mm-hmm. this is where if you start standing up a little bit more and letting her feel uncomfortable, the yeah. respect and the depth of your relationship after the fucking fight yeah. it will, it, and after this frustration, because we create a situation where people mm-hmm. are used to this. Right. Okay. So people are used to you making it right. Being the one to be the bigger man. Mm-hmm. I think that maybe the tip on the personal growth is stop being the bigger man. Hmm. 
Let them, let them sit in their own discomfort a little bit so you can get out of being controlled. Now, the, we're, now what I'm talking to you about is how to run a team, how to run a business. <laughs> right. Don't take it personal. So what are you hearing? I hear that I can let people be uncomfortable. And if they're disappointed, it comes down to a quick question of why instead of going, well, let me fix that. That's first. Yeah. And fixing it's okay, but having yeah. awareness around that, you're not going to control yeah. me, but I'm going to try to fix it. But on my terms. Yeah. I like, think yeah. I'd like to, sorry, Ben, just to go for him. He picked up one, he made one statement there, which kind of um, irked me. You made the statement that you don't want to take it personally. Mm -hmm. okay. That's great. Uh, I'm a, I, I'm a great believer in yes, take it personally, but only when it's worth taking personal. Okay. okay. There's, there's a line, you know, if someone comes up to me and says, Steve, you couldn't do this for $10. I'm not going to take it personal because that makes no sense. It's not logical and I'm not going to rise to debate. But right. if you do something that's going to affect my family, my home, my livelihood, right. I'm taking that personal. Now, you are, we can see your 5%. We've already found that. You're, you're a strong shoulder that wants to support and conquer and achieve and do whatever's necessary to get the job done so you can go home with a clean conscience and a big smile that you achieved that. That's yeah. great. But let's say for argument's sake, and we're talking about the staff now, we're talking about the team now, and yeah. your uncomfortableness of um, getting the appropriate team, and more importantly, getting rid of the ones that are not appropriate. Right. Um, you, you got family, we, we know you've got a wife, you got kids? I have three kids. Mm -hmm. How old are they? Uh, two toddlers, four and five-year-old boys, and a 16-year-old daughter. All right, so you're sitting in your favorite restaurant, and you're there with your wife, you're there with your kids, and they've just, you know, you're celebrating a Friday night, you've closed a good deal, you're all sitting there with a nice plate of food, and some arsehole like me walks up to the table and takes one of the plates of food away from the kids and just carries on walking through the restaurant. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, probably, what the hell are you doing? I'm imagining that Mr. Nice Guy suddenly comes after me with all guns blazing because mm, we have yeah. to step up when our family are being affected. Absolutely. Right. So the person in your office that's not doing the appropriate job is affecting your family because the more they affect you, it then channels down. If they're not doing that job properly, then now they become an expense. And again, that's where you start kind of like resenting that you're paying them. You're taking food away from the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you're <laughs> completely right to take things personal. There's a, great, there's a great myth out there where they say, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not personal, it's business. Every single brand out there now has a personality lead in it. You know, in the old days, you never knew anyone behind the Oracles and the AT&Ts. We went into the recession. All of a sudden, you got the chairman of Verizon up there. You know the head of Apple. You know the head of um, Microsoft. You know the head of Tesla. You know the head of Virgin. Every brand now is trying to come forward and showing you the face of who the company is and what they stand for. Right. And you should take what you do personal. You should take the fact that you don't want to let someone down. You're mm -hmm. there to achieve. You're there to conquer. You're there to do the right thing when it's the right thing. If the client's a dick mm -hmm. and is asking you to do something that's not right, that's when your brain cells kick in and go, hey, my job's to achieve. Mm -hmm. My job's not to be controlled. Yeah. My job's not to be dangled with. My job is not to chase mirrors. Mm -hmm. And you won't do anything that impacts your family. If you have trouble firing that person because it doesn't work, and you'll know it doesn't work because something in your gut will tell you it's not working. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a great mm -hmm. believer that my gut is far more intelligent than my head. My <laughs> gut usually kind of like flutters before mm -hmm. my head realizes what's actually going on. I trust my gut now. If I'm not relating to someone, like me yeah. and you are gelling. Me and you could be hanging out in a bar now, drinking whiskey, and we'd be mm -hmm. cool, okay? Mm -hmm. But if we knew something was uncomfortable, our posture would be changing. Our tone of okay. voice would be changing. So mm -hmm. when you've got that person in your circle, 
in your team and it's not right, I want you to think about the prick that takes that, ta uh, that plate of food away from your family and then ask yeah. yourself, how fast do you ch chase that mother down and assault them? Right. Okay? Yeah. So in which case, the next time you're having a bit of a problem about getting rid of someone, realize mm -hmm. they've just stolen your kid's food. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll have a problem with it then. That's crazy, Steve, because I just, I, I have things firing in my head relating to everything you and Ben have just said. And at the same time, that's actually probably a bigger challenge that I've just recognized is the internal, I want my business and my team and my family to be personal. And I keep trying to make it not personal because I want to be businessman. <laughs> so that's interesting. I think nowadays, and especially with entrepreneurs, and let's backpedal for a second. Mm -hmm. If you were an entrepreneur in the 80s, mm -hmm. you couldn't get a real job. Yeah. Um, now everyone wants to be an entrepreneur because they see Elon Musk and, and Richard Branson and they realize being an entrepreneur is cool. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur is basically getting up in the morning and having someone kicking you in the testicles for about eight hours a day and then the one day they don't is when you make the money. It's a tough thing. Mm -hmm. It's not cool. It's literally laying there in bed at 11 o'clock at night trying to work out how you're going to make payroll, how are you going to keep the lights on, how are you going to use your credit card to pay the electric bill? That's what we go through before we start <laughs> yeah. standing on the tip. Okay? Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> if we're completely honest with it, that's where we are. And now, more than anything, and especially with you, it's your personality. It's who you <laughs> are that is going to make you different to me. Now, we could both be doing the exact same job, but someone's going to come to you over me, and it's because you're you. Right. And you can only be you if you expose the fact of your personality, what you stand for. I have a personality brand. There's loads of pictures of me and the family. Do you know the funny thing is? There's never a straight on picture of my wife's face. Hmm. You know, we're always joking around and there'd be a side view or something like that because you can still show your family and what you stand for, what you do without going over the sanctuary of what your family actually stands for, where they actually are. Okay. But um, regarding being a personal business and especially with who you are and the fact that you don't like to let anyone down and your big heart and your big smile, there's a big head of smile on my screen at the moment. Um, <laughs> you definitely want to focus on the fact that you're a personality brand. Yeah. Yeah, no question. No Would question. you agree, Ben, or not? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's actually, I was just thinking of something. It's such a good segue into the brand stuff. Um, mm -hmm. you, you did say something, Chris. First of all, I do agree. I think you are the brand. And if you, if you just a little tip, if you try to be like anyone else, you're going to lose that power. And mm -hmm. so that's, so there's a lot of people out there telling you what to do and it's like, and, and who to be and what to do, especially as real estate agents. And, uh, but no one can compete against Chris. If, mm -hmm. if you're Chris, no one can compete. No one's stuff is stolen from me. And I look at it online and I'm like, right on. But if we ever went head, if we ever went head to head, you lose. Cause I know that's right. my game. And right. I'm, obviously yeah. I'm giving it all away. One clip there. Always remember this statement. It takes zero effort to be you. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Carry on, Ben. Sorry. Yeah, it's so much, and the opposite is it takes so much effort to try to be like someone else. It is, Bingo. and it's a constant, constant battle. But just a, we're about thirty minutes in. I think, mm -hmm. I think if we, yeah, we're not going to yet. But if we ended it right here, I think, I think uh, you would agree. There's a couple big uh, aha moments and some some things you've gotten already. Absolutely. Uh, the one or two things that are standing in front of my head is huge already, but I can see there's five or six things standing just behind that awesome. even going, okay, wow, you're really stirring the Good. pot. So it's a, it's a perspective change. So what happens is you've been looking the same way over and over and over and over again, trying to mm -hmm. figure it out, but just by turning it a little bit left and right, now all of a sudden it's like a brand new door to go examine a new room in your life or a new, you know, that's how I look at it. Okay. But just the, the one point, because um, I'm more of more concerned uh, and this is why I want to bring it up and not end it right here is because mm -hmm. I have a heart here for you. And it's like, you say you're rebranding again, right? Yeah. Okay. So we need to, we like the, one of the biggest things I see happen with entrepreneurs and real estate agents is they spend a lot of time doing things that don't actually move your business forward, buy right. back your time, make mm -hmm. sales. And now you're like, I'm not sure you're trying to solve a team thing. So it makes sense. Like, oh, maybe I'll rebrand. Mm hmm but, but the thing is, I just want to shift a little bit of thinking around brand. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So ask me, say, Ben, what's your brand? Ben, what's your brand? It is the conversation 
behind my back. Yep. So if you, if you realize that if I wanted to do, let's say leopard skin as my brand, let's just say my brand is the blue and white colors of the American flag mixed with, or let's say I'm the guy with the cowboy hat and the cat. Mm -hmm. so that's not brand. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not brand. That's just pictures. Yeah. Because what's being, this is an online social media, unbelievably connected world with human communication and connection. What you do will be seen. It's the greatest advantage we've ever had in this time ever. Because when right. you do good work, not just good work, raise the game to pop someone's freaking head off. It's so good. Right. And I would be stop working on your brand and think about working on your brand. And I would work on the brand on how do I raise the experience I'm giving to each and every client that I ever do. Now I'm just explaining culture of right. your team. Yes. You start having culture. that conversation. You take this video, learn how to talk about brand, about what the brand is behind your back, boys and girls. How are, and then when every time you meet, how are you celebrating that moment with your team? Right. Because instead you could have the conversation going, guess what guys, I landed every shopping cart at the grocery store with our face on it. Woo. <laughs> Freaking mm -hmm. cares. <laughs> what a waste of money. Put some money into finding out who people are. Be so fucking thoughtful. Go to the okay. psychological ties that okay. say, I can't believe he did that. Mm -hmm. And then the next there is, how can I help him? And you repeat mm -hmm. that over and over. And you know what, Chris, knowing who you are just by looking at your heart and what we've learned a little bit, you will love your business. Mm -hmm. And you will attract people that love to have this. Like I got, it, I got guys that pop there into my office or on my team. Like, guess what? I found this out. This guy's this way, this way. I've already got it. Like, like the closing gifts, the different things. Like, raise your bar so your brand is of your experience, right? Not an image or a logo. Does that make right. sense? Totally. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling, Steve, you're in line with this kind of stuff. This is where uh, I'm totally in line with it. You know, my my. Funny enough, I've got three websites, three companies, and not a single one of them's got a phone number on it. Um, so I am I'm very much about building the culture before the brand. There's way too many people out there that spend too much money on making sure the logo looks pretty, but has no substance in it. So, right. And I think uh, Chris is walking around there with a bunch of substance that um, he is his brand. His, he is his culture. He just needs to wear it on his sleeve and let other people come to the party. Beautiful. Can I ask you a question about that? No, you can't. Go on in. <laughs> <laughs> well, for both of you, the actual, what you just described is actually what I feel I already do. The only concept of brand that I just brought up was to try and encompass what I see negative in the business where I want to provide something that's positive, And that's this. I don't want a team to post everything they do that's, great. We're on Chris Miller. We're on team Chris Miller. And you can tell me if that's wrong or right. But when I talk about brand, it's actually, I'm trying to just create something that's inclusive to my ent entire team. So they have ownership of what we call the logo because they know the culture is Chris Miller, but I don't want them to feel like it's Chris Miller's business. I want them to feel like they are on their business, their team in an inclusive logo or IE brand. Does that make Steve, any sense? Steve, why don't I jump in on this one? Yeah, go. So, so uh, <laughs> like you're talking my world, man. Yeah. You just described what I've built. My, my, my real estate company is called Team Osterveld. I right. didn't want to have Ben Osterveld and Associates, like every other Joe Blow out there. I don't even exactly. like the fact that my last name's in it to this day. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, Chris, we're in the same boat, okay? Yeah, totally. But, but guess what? Guess what? It's not because of my logo that they believe in. Mm -hmm. They believe in me. Mm-hmm. You train for five years, man. You know what value that is? I think you might not see what you bring to the fucking table. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think that people want to come because of the Chris Miller fucking brand. But it's not okay. the brand that's external visual. It's mm -hmm. the heart. Ben Osterveld mm -hmm. is the fucking brand of Team Osterveld. But I don't have that on, the, I don't have that on my public image. No, right. And every, just, just some simple things you can do. Really tactical, okay? Yeah. Don't yeah. think so much about this. Just be okay. yourself. Now, here's okay. the thing, because you're spending too much time thinking about the structure and how I'm going to just be you and let it grow. But here's a couple of things that you can do. 
Never okay. put your name on a sign of a listing that's on your team. Perfect. Okay, I'm going through that right now. Right? Just so so my, my team is Adam Benke, Colin Clowater, or whatever. On the very bottom, I have a team hanger. It says Team Osterveld. I'm not even on it. I put their cell phone on it so they can take their own showing calls so I don't have to. You are totally speaking my mind, and I don't know the ins and outs of you, so that makes sense. So, so that's why I wanted to jump in because we're talking yeah. super simple here. I think you're overcomplicating oh. a little bit. Literally, okay. just say, hey, look, I want you guys to have a part of the team. I want you to be part of it. I don't, I, 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 but the thing is, though, if, you, if you're being that nice guy that can be controlled, this is going to bite you in the ass, this advice. Yeah. I promise you. Because they're going to go right on, and you will be used and abused and taken advantage of, I promise. But you need to be strong. I am Chris Miller, I am the brand, but I wanna make sure that it's not publicly built around me. Okay. I want you guys to have your own identity in the Chris Miller band. Is that a Chris Miller band? Isn't that a? <laughs> there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but do you understand, we're talking subtle, most important, unbelievable, these small shifts that can change everything. So that's why I want to stop and say, if you're the nice guy that can be controlled by feeling you let down someone or whatever, mm -hmm. this won't work for you. Right. You're going to give them everything and they're going to take it and run away, yeah. not run yeah. with it. Yeah. Okay. So just a subtlety, put the name on somebody. You need to be strong in your leader. Mm -hmm. This is my freaking okay. business. Those are my plates. My kids are eating off of mm -hmm. like that, that, that jealousy, that healthy, like, do you guys understand? This is my, like, and then, and then the other thing is if you can raise your value around actually knowing what you have to offer, which is a bit right. of more work that takes a little bit more work that ties to right. a little bit more of the past stuff. But, but just understand that, that you can give them the identity. I have all kinds of team structures and different things like that. Like I, after a year, I give them a little piece of someone else they bring in. Mm. And there's another structure is after 20 deals, they jump to 60, 40. Yeah. Like, or there's so many different ways to do it, but don't be overly fair. Yeah. Because knowing you, you're probably going to give a bit too much. And then it, there's the yeah. chance of them taking advantage of that. So anyway, Steve, well, what do you I can tell think? you, I'm already guilty of that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's why I bring it up. I can, that's because I know when you, when I see you, it's like, I just know this because I know that's in me. It's mm -hmm. easy to see once you've overcome something, you can see it. Okay. I would like you also to um, gamify this and okay. ask people around you um, that are close to you, mm -hmm. but also some of those that are just peripheral. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Ask them what they think of you. What do I stand for? What are my values? What, what, what is my culture? Ask them. Um, mm -hmm. I have an element of branded and marketing in my concierge firm, uh, Bluefish. Here's a funny thing that I happen. I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody. When I launched my concierge firm, I used to have passwords to get into the parties. Okay, okay. a lot of people know that. One of, the part, one of the passwords was finish this sentence, one fish, two fish, red fish. So we would have people come up to the door of this party and go, blue fish. Mm -hmm. When we set up the company as at the time, we didn't know what it was gonna be, party promoting, event planning, travel agents, we had no bloody idea. We actually launched it with a name called Trianon. And okay. Trianon stands for the final court of the Greek gods. When they can't decide between themselves, this is the ultimate final say. Okay? Couldn't have thought okay. of anything more precocious than that. You know, people <laughs> phone us up at that time and go, hey, is this bluefish? And we'd be like, no, this is Trianon. And they'd be like, oh, sorry, look at the bluefish. And they hung up. I noticed at the time... It wasn't what I said that was important. It's what everyone else that was yelling that was gospel. And they mm -hmm. thought we were a fun firm called Bluefish that mm -hmm. did this and did this and did this. So we stopped designing anything. And we went, okay, who are we? And they told us. And guess what? If they told us what we did, then guess who we could sell to? Because they already, they've already told, oh, you do the best pizzas in the world. Great, you're right. How many do you want? You know, it was that kind of thing. Right. So I want you to start looking around. And before you start sitting there with your pen and paper and go, hey, I'm going to design a brand. I'm going to design a culture. I'm going to design what I stand exactly. for, my family motto. Mm -hmm. Get everyone else that's around you that's ever done any business with you and mm -hmm. ask them, why did you do business with me? What stood out? I'm really trying to grow here. And it would help me if you could answer these questions. 
What do you believe I stand for? What was the greatest attribute of working with me? And get them to tell you what your culture is, what your brand is. You may be surprised at what it will do. It will, it will invigorate you. And then you can go to the team and go, hey, mm -hmm. I did this and I got this response. What do you think? And then get people to, to, to tell you what you actually stand for. And if you like it, great, there's your brand and culture. If you hate the answer, <laughs> then you know what you've got to change. Okay, that makes sense. It's awesome, Steve. It's almost, it is, it's funny because it's almost like what you're saying is your brand is already designed. You just yep. got to go find it. And it's in that conversation that's already happening that you're not hearing. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've always been a great cool. believer that if I tell you I'm brilliant, it's marketing. If your best friend tells you I'm brilliant, it's gospel. <laughs> there's a there's a marketing strategy I use as for real estate agents, and it can be done for anyone. And it's so so similar to what you said. I just systemized it a little bit. Is I um, I interview 100 people for so if I you're a real estate agent beginning, they interview 100 people and ask four questions. You send them a thank you cards for the second touch, then you send them the results for the third touch, then you send them a gift and ask them to practice sell to price their home, and you build a relationship. But you take the same model, is if you can hire an assistant. This would be a really great practice, really practical. First of all, get your 20 that you need to talk to yourself. Right. Find the 80 best clients you have because 15 years you got 80 and mm -hmm. say, say, hi, Mr. Seller or buyer or past client. I just want to tell you, we're looking to really up our game and we're looking at our future marketing plan coming into the fall. Okay. Uh, just a couple questions. What do you remember about our business? What's the experience you had around the business? Mm -hmm. Would you refer us? We're really desperately looking at it because we believe our brand is behind our back and we want to see what's happening behind our back. We want to raise our game. And if you can get your team to do that, you can get your assistant to do that. You'll come out with a hundred. Then, then now you're marketing. Now you get a hundred on the list. You got their updated addresses. Every single time you ask the interview questions, you literally write a handwritten note, not branded with your face, please. Just a white yeah. one that says, thank you. So guess what that reminds you of? A love note. It's very exciting mm -hmm. to get a little white love note yep. versus getting a branded like, hi, Chris Miller, like, like gross, right? It's completely mm -hmm. different. Send them a little note, mail it to them. So now not only did you ask their opinion, now think of the psychological ties. You're going to trigger something called nobody ever values my opinion. That is a cultural undertone of society. How about this? No one ever understands me. No one ever hears me. No one values my opinion. All of a sudden you're giving them something so important. So in the letter, it's thank you so much for your opinion. It, I value it so much. It's going to help my business moving forward. And if you, if you want, you give a $5 gift card to really bring it home. But if you don't got the cash, do not do a $5 gift card. It's a right. complete bad business move. Mm -hmm. so, so take the card. Now you've got two touches to your entire base. That alone will guarantee you at least fifteen to 20000 in sales just by doing the asking. Right. Right? I, I guarantee you. So, yeah. so this is something you can leave as an actual practical homework. Exactly what Steve was saying. I've just, I've, it, which happens to be something that I do mm -hmm. for the business. And it's like, take that as your next move to find your culture, find what's happening behind your back. And then you can have something. Now you can start having that conversation, send a thank you cards. Then you can say, then you can send out one more and say, here's the results of what I found. And because of your opinion, these are the things I'm not going to do. And these are the things I'm going to do going forward. That's your third touch. See, in relationships, gotcha. if you can get to five or six touches, high quality touches, you're locked in. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I do a lot of this stuff in my past. But again, with me spinning my wheels the last couple of years of trying to not reinvent myself, but to be making sure that I'm constantly on the right path, I, I have let a lot of these things go because I don't have time for them. So that's where that. Which is that what generates out. business. So it's yeah. like it's completely backwards, yeah. Do you know, it's the silly little things. It's that little pinch of salt that really makes the sauce sound, uh, taste good. It's mm -hmm. those silly Beautiful. little things that you think you don't have time for, which is going to make you a mammoth. Yeah, and it's, it's so weird. That is, the, that is what gives it that taste, right? Like you can make the most mm -hmm. gorgeous meal. A little bit yeah. of salt, it's like, wow. Like a steak without any flavoring is not bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, it's not going to win any prizes either. So you've yeah. got to focus on your little... Also, the funny thing is, that those little things that you do, that you don't have any touch, those are usually the little magic touches to make you you. Beautiful. Yeah. And that makes sense. If I could just interject, I redid my Christmas cards again last year. And 
did a handwritten one. My wife and I sat down and wrote every Christmas card to everyone in my past client list. And yeah. by the second week of January, I had three people call me direct and say, you can go. you come and sit with us? So I know it works. I don't right, have to be so convinced, here's, but. Here's, here's a little game, game player for you. Mm -hmm. okay? I want you to do the exact same thing with those Christmas cards. And I want you to send them out in August. Yeah, there you go. All right, because mm -hmm. what's going to happen is inside you the card, you can put in there, I want to be the first person to send you a Christmas card. <laughs> That's freaking genius, because I That's hate awesome. Christmas cards. You've just figured <laughs> it out. It gets, it gets even better. So yeah. I, I'm a great, and you've got kids, haven't you? Okay? Yeah. So there's a couple of problems that you've got that we're not going to go into on detail here, but mm. you've got kids going to school, being told that they've got to fill in the, the box here, they've got to write the right letter here, they've got to pronounce the right quote here, and they get an A. Mm -hmm. And then they've got their dad at home doing what the hell he wants to make business work. Mm -hmm. right? School and real life are different things. Yeah. So the kids are looking at you as an entrepreneur and they're going, well, how does dad do it? You know, did he get a degree? Has he got, yeah, the school's going, oh, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this to be successful. I'm, I'm guessing at a long run, like most entrepreneurs, you're not that curve. You're not, you haven't got all of those things that the school is brainwashing your kids and telling them they, they need. Mm -hmm. You've got to start helping your kids with entrepreneurial lessons, because like it or not, there's a piece right. of your blood in them. Mm -hmm. okay? And mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, they're gonna go, why the bloody hell am I studying this? You know, <laughs> my, dad's, my dad's a millionaire flying to Monaco. He mm. didn't know how to do this, you know? So it's that kind mm. of thing. Yeah. So with my kids, I try to bring them into fun marketing ideas. I got my daughter to run down to the local uh, card store, mm. buy Christmas cards in July. When are Christmas cards at their <laughs> cheapest? There you go. So yeah. she's got the Christmas cards. She comes back. I actually said her because of my personality, get the shittiest, yeah. heavily Love glittered that. cards you could because we all hate those because you open them up and you get glitter all over your trousers. <laughs> so she, got, she got the shittiest, cheesiest cards she could. And then she handwrites them in there because believe it or not, my handwriting is very equivalent to an 11 year old. She writes in there, you know, I wanted to be the first one to send you a Christmas card. I'm here as you need and I respect having you in my circle. All the best, Steve, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And then we post them out with a handwritten piece on the front, okay? Then the client gets them. And I've often said to people before, how many fingers does it take to delete an email? Mm -hmm. One. How many fingers does it take to open up an envelope? All of them. That's called total engagement. Right. Okay? Yeah. So they're opening up a letter. They've got the feel. They've got the rip. If you want to be really cool, spray a bit of perfume in there or something. But then they pull out the Christmas card and they're now engaged. They're entertained. They find it different. Again, you're being different because how many idiots send out Christmas cards in August? Okay? Mm -hmm. That's great. I had clients contact me going, I want to thank you for your marketing. I want to thank you for reaching out to me. I want to thank you for the long conversation I had with my wife because I had glitter down my trousers that night. <laughs> so it was brilliant and it worked. And try, try different things. Um, stay with me one second. Where do you live, Chris? Edmonton, Alberta. Edmonton, Alberta. You got any nice hotels near you? Lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So get your ass in one of those in the next week. Walk up to the concierge desk and say, hey, I'm just here having a meeting, but I've got to do a little bit of writing for my clients. I need some envelopes and I need some stationery. So I went to Santa Barbara. I do this all the time. I'm okay. on about twice a week, even when I don't need it. I go and get an envelope from the uh, concierge. I also get the stationery. From the, uh, you can see this? Yeah, yeah. Right. This is from a hotel called Hotel Californian in Santa Barbara. Okay. I will write something on there. Don't even know what I'm going to write yet because I only got them last Tuesday. But they're here ready for me to do it. I will write something on there. I will put it in the envelope. When you get a letter from a hotel handwritten, are you going to open it? Absolutely. Right. So... I get 10 out of 10 open response 
when I send that. And in it, it could be something as simple as, I was traveling uh, in Santa Barbara and I thought about something we were talking about, Chris. I'd really like to go into that a little bit further. Do you mind shooting me an email as well? Shoot me an email, shoot me a text as to when we could chat next. All the best, Steve. Email, cell phone to send me a text. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you then all of a sudden get text. And then when the Christmas cards went out and stuff like that, I always do the same thing in there. You start getting these texts and you can go, ah, Christmas cards have landed. <laughs> so it's a way of engaging with your people with your personality Great. find out what works for you the one thing I like about the hotel stationery is it will always get through the gatekeepers and secondly it's interesting you know <laughs> who the hell sends out hotel stationery it must yeah. be a friend of mine they must be traveling somewhere the anticipation they have of opening up that envelope and then they open it up and it's a little message from you Handwritten, never typed. Yeah. And get your kids to yeah. do it. I love slave labor. So, you, you know what's cool? I think about the psyche behind it. And I think about the back door to success and the, raising your energy and your confidence and all that's huge for me. And by doing this type of activity, Chris, it's yeah. fun. And when you're having fun, you legitimately mm -hmm. raise your income. You, relate, right. you, you also, when Chris Miller comes home, after getting five texts back on how great you are and how funny and how great that was received and then you go sit down and have dinner with your kids mm -hmm. how does that work mm -hmm. you're the you're the best version of yourself by doing this kind of marketing so i look at it from the back door too it's like even if you're having a shitty day go write five of these things like i'm not mm -hmm. even joking get get out of your head and just go you know what i need to engage yeah. and it just from a because i'm huge into going there's the answers uh, there's lots of good answers but the man behind the strategy needs to have to just understand like this marketing is actually going to grow you and make it right. so fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun, fun, fun. Because the grind of entrepreneurship yeah. sucks. Yeah. And the thing is, what's really fun is this moments, right? But you can create them. That's mm -hmm. why Steve's got a smile on his face. He's sending stuff all the time, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I've got a smile on my face, but I think it's a good job I don't live in Alberta because I'd actually <laughs> like to come over and slap the shit out of Chris. And the reason <laughs> I would like to do that is because, uh. as, as Ben's already said, we, we consult businesses and mm -hmm. most businesses we consult have problems and we have to delve in and find where the problems. We found your problems within three nanoseconds and then found the diamond behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus, man, you are going to be absolutely brilliant unless you get off of this video and do nothing with it. Right. Ideas are worthless. Totally. Love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Chris, do mm -hmm. yourself and your, if it's not for you, for your kids, for mm -hmm. your family, okay? Take the stuff that we've spoken about yeah. and action it, because you can do it all. You don't have to go out and buy a full-time uh, assistant. You mm -hmm. get VAs and you only pay them on the hours. You don't have to do this marketing yourself. You get around on a Sunday afternoon with your kids, get a pizza in the middle, and you hand write the letters you know, all as a family and then send them out on a Monday. Nothing that we've given you with respect to Ben mm -hmm. is hard. Mm -hmm. Nothing is hard that we've given you, but mm -hmm. everything is impactful. It's mm -hmm. raw. It's relatable. You're mm -hmm. bloody re relatable beyond belief. Totally. Your personality is there. You, you're one of those easy finds. This has been a very easy call to have. You're an easy guy to chat with. And if you're not happy with your life, with your money, with your finances, with your stress, your strain, you're two seconds away from being able to do something about it because you've right. got the ingredients to be able to do so. You are not a hard job. Mm. Well, on one hand, but I if say you don't thank do you. It, I will come up to Alberta. I will find you. I could probably just act as your as your heavy. I'm local here. I could probably yeah. just come and say, <laughs> I'll, I can put a mask on. I'll try to make it look like you. Right. All I need to, I got to kind of, I don't know, drive a motor, motorbike and a black t-shirt. I'll slap right. you so hard. We'll run away. And then you'll mm -hmm. say, did you get my message? Good. Good. I will send, I will <laughs> I'd, send I'd feel bad though, Chris. I'd feel bad like you. I'd be like, oh, actually, I better not do that. <laughs> you're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens in my psyche. Just so you know, I know what that feels like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's, you know what? Why don't, uh, that was a beautiful way to wrap this up. Chris, do you have anything else you need to say to bring kind of this meeting to a close? Or are you ready to uh, go to action? 
No, you know, I think when it comes down to it, I was just going to say to Steve there, I said, on one hand, I say, thank you for the compliment that I don't seem like I'm hard to fix. And at the same time, I'm like, if it's really that simple, I got to shake my head a little bit. So <laughs> I guess I, get, I really got that out of today is I, I recognize that I have all the ingredients and all the desires and the joys about this business because I love doing what you two just described. And it's funny how in my head, I feel like I, it's not the tools I lack. In that, it's the tools yeah. I lack in the structure of my business because I like doing all that stuff. It's when it comes to creating an environment for the team and like we talked about the culture that I've always struggled with. I want a culture around me because I have it. I want to bring other people into it. And yeah, but there's a reason when you're on a plane that they say put the air mask on yourself first. And before you fix right. a team or get a culture, you need to get your head straight. The good mm -hmm. thing for you, the absolutely incredible thing for you, thanks to Ben, is mm -hmm. Ben's now created this video that quite simply you should put in your calendar that every Monday morning at mm -hmm. 10 o'clock in the morning, you watch it for the next six weeks. Now, I hate to say this, but I challenge you because I don't think you'll do it. Because okay. people just quite simply, they wane off it. But yeah. if you watch this every Monday at 10 o'clock, the first Monday, you'll write all the notes down. The second Monday needs to be, what ones have I action? By the time you get to the sixth Monday, have I completed everything and what's mm -hmm. the effect be? Right. And now you're toying with me, Steve, because now you're saying you're asking me to do something you don't think I'm going to do and I'm going to feel bad now if I don't do it. <laughs> We've got some new awareness here, folks. <laughs> I don't think you'll do it either, Chris. He doesn't look the kind of guy that would uh, let anyone down, but, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, what I'm going to do here, Chris, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to uh, stop the recording, and then I'm going to let you go, and then Steve and I will just do a little debrief and hang out here for a second. And, but, uh, yeah, man, we'll, uh, well, let's keep in touch, Chris. Absolutely. Well, I'd just so like much. to say thank you to both of you guys, both for the opportunity to meet you both online here a little bit and also just to uh, hash out some of the things that are in my brain to build an awesome company. I appreciate it. Awesome. Cheers, Chris. See you, man. What up, Chris? Cheers. Take care.